Hi there and welcome to this third video in the VVNX uh, installation and configuration series. In this video here I'm going to be taking you through the basic steps to install the virtual VNX into your VMware v vSphere infrastructure. Um, just before we move on though and to recap, this is the lab environment in which I'm going to be installing it. It's a single ESXi host, um, nothing fancy at all, entry level uh, an older server now actually, it's a HP ProLite ML110G7 it's got a single socket quad core uh, and running 32 gigs of memory um, I'm also running two VMs on the ESXi host so uh, the first one is a Windows 2012 uh, domain controller and uh, that's running services such as DNS and DHCP and I'm running a um, vCenter server appliance. Now the other thing to point out as well is the version of VSXI I'm running so I'm actually running version uh, 6.0.0 and that's the build number um, and that's the latest one as of the time of recording this video. So just to show you that the VVNX uh, will run on version 6, uh, the minimum uh, version that you can run it on is 5.5 so anything after 5.5 and onwards uh, you should be fine. So what I'm going to do here I'm just going to run through the steps of um, deploying the virtual VNX and uh, as you can see it's very straightforward to, uh, to do indeed um, and in the previous video, video 2, if you haven't seen that go back to ch check that out uh, we downloaded the OVA file off of the emc.com uh, software download portal. So what I'm going to do is deploy the template by uh, right mouse clicking on the ESXi host um, and then um, selecting deploy template. That opens the wizard that you see here. We've got two options. We can either point the wizard at a URL uh, that is hosting the uh, OVA file or the OVF file. Um, I however have copied it up to my uh, local NAS here so um, I'm going to be pointing it uh, to that location there. I'm going to click the next bu button and at this point here you'll see a review. Now one thing that will stand out is this, is this yellow box at the top and saying that the um, the package contains extra configuration options which is correct because if you scroll down to the bottom here you can see these are the extra configuration options um, that come with deploying this, um, this, this template. Um, to proceed you need to uh, click accept extra config options. Um, if just running down here just uh, that's the version number of the uh, virtual VNX that you're running. The download size that's 2.2 gigs um, that we already know. Uh, if we're to thin provision it it'll take up 2.2 um, gigabytes in size and uh, if we're going with thick provisioning and that's something I'll cover in a couple of steps time uh, it will occupy around about um, 84 gigabytes in disk space. We've got the license agreement here. Uh, if you're the type of person that likes to read through license agreements, there's uh, um, lots of good stuff there. And as it's got at the top there, this is the EMC VVNX Community Edition, and that's the free version, the Community Edition that we're downloading and installing. So uh, if you're happy with the T's and C's, just click Accept and then click Next. Uh, we've got to then select or tell the wizard uh, the data center uh, that we want to deploy the virtual machine on. Uh, I'll select the uh, data center there and the ESXi host as you can see here has two data stores available to it this first one here the data store one that's actually a local SATA disk on the server um, and that gives us the options of um, either thin provisioning it thick uh, provision lazy zero or eager zero now EMC in their installation guide recommend for best performance um, to deploy it with thick provision eager zero um, I however I'm not going to uh, deploy it locally I'm actually going to deploy it on my iAmiga ix4 like i say this is a very modest lab that it's being uh, deployed onto um, and because that's nfs it will automatically default to thin provisioning um, also i'm not going to be driving any large workloads or doing anything fancy for it so it's really just for the purposes of showing you how to install and configure the virtual vnx so i'm going to select the ix4 um, data store there for deployment. There's three networks here it's going to be creating so one for management, two for uh, data networks and that will be carrying your uh, iSCSI, your CIFS, your NFS um, uh, network traffic, data traffic. So um, you'll notice when the VM comes up there will be another two uh, network ports there as well and that's for system um, internal system traffic uh, on the virtual machine itself. So uh, just going to click Next like so and this is where you can customize the template for deployment so it gives you a couple of options here you can uh, change the name um, of the VNX if you if you so wish so we could call it something like you know VNX um, sorry uh, v, VNX 01 like so um, and then from here the other thing I want to call out or, or 
um, draw your attention to is the ability to allocate a static IP uh, Pre predetermine the subnet mask and also the get gateway. Um, now, there's two ways of deploying the template: either you've connected to your ESXi host directly, or you've, uh, you're deploying it via the uh, vCenter, which is what we're doing in this instance. Now, you can only um, configure or hard hard set the uh, network IP4. Um, network uh, details if you're connecting through the vCenter. If you're connecting or deploying the template directly through the ESXi host, um, you won't be able to do this at all. So uh, um, for the purposes of just showing you how we go in and identify what the IP address is after it's deployed, so you can then jump into the Unisphere web interface to um, pr proceed with the uh, configuration, I'm going to keep these blank for now. But because I've connected via uh, VMware vCenter, I could at this point allocate it a static IP address so that makes things a little bit easier. So I'll proceed on by clicking next. Um, it gives you a summary before you're ready to go. You've got the option there to power it on uh, after deployment. So I'm going to keep that unchecked at the moment and I'm going to click finish like so. So at this point here it's bringing down the uh, the, um, the 2.2 gig file and it's deploying it uh, onto my ESXi host. Um, like we saw there, I didn't check the box to automatically start it at all, so it'll be sitting there ready for us to uh, ready for us to go. So that'll take a, a few seconds to do. Obviously, depending on the speed of your system, um, will determine generally how fast it will will deploy. Um, this is actually relatively quite quick. This bit. Um, and before we get to the next part, I'm going to take this time just to draw your attention to the length of time it actually takes you to spin up the machine uh, the first time. Because what it will do next, um, when, you, when we click to go and start the virtual VNX, it will go through a process that will take up to about 45 minutes. Um, on my system here, like, like I say, it's not a high-end system at all. It takes pretty much bang on 45 minutes to do a run through. If you've got a faster system, it may go a little bit quicker. But as a rule of thumb, generally it takes around about that 45 Five minutes to actually configure up the virtual VNX VM the first time. So it's going through and doing lots of obviously scripted uh, um, uh, steps in the background to get it up and running for that first time. Um, and just to uh, just to uh, confirm as well, this is a one-off action it needs to taste, uh, take. It's not a case of every time you start it, it needs to go through this. It's just that initial configuration takes the 45 minutes. So going back to the uh, deployment here, we're at 59% at the moment. Um, so that will not take too much longer, uh, but what we'll do, so uh, we're not hanging around, I'll um, speed this bit up and um, I'll let you know once it's deployed. Okay, the virtual machine, the virtual VNX is now deployed. Um, as you can see, there it is. It's uh, sitting there, all ready to go. Um, now let's have a quick look at the VM uh, hardware that the template's allocated to it. So we've got the two virtual, uh, the two CPUs, the 12 gigs of memory, um, and it's got three hard disks. And this is the part that I wanted to show you. It's got those three hard disks there, but obviously depending on whether you're thin provisioning or thick provisioning will determine how much space that's actually going to take on your data store. Um, I'm, I'm thin provisioning against in this case, and those three disks, very important point here, um, aren't actually. Um, uh, usable by the end user. You're not able to add them to a storage pool and share them out. Um, once once it's gone through its initial configuration, once we've set, uh, started it the first time, we'll then have to go back in and allocate uh, user disks to the virtual machine that the uh, virtual VNX will then pick up that we can then drop into a storage pool and then carve out to, for example, NFS, SIFS, um, you know, um, iSCSI, whatever we want to do, block or file. Uh, pro protocol based storage. So um, we've got the three disks by default. We'll no, never actually be touching those or, or writing to them as such, not not uh, indirectly via um, any of those protocols I mentioned there. There's the uh, the five network adapters I mentioned. So um, one is for management, two is for data, and uh, two are used apparently for internal communications um, on the uh, virtual VNX itself. So um, let's at this point, let's start up the virtual VNX. So there we go. We're going to start it up. I'm just going to open a, uh, a console window up here so we can see what it's doing. And you might remember I did mention this, this step here 
um, does take up to about 45 minutes. So um, uh, lots of interesting stuff comes uh, flicking up the screen there. So if you've got nothing else better to do, make yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and you can watch what it's doing whilst it's doing that initial configuration. Uh, but in the interest of time, um, I will drop back. I will come back uh, once it's fully up and running and able to be accessed via web browser to access the EMC Unisphere web management interface.